Hi, it's uh, Mark Champ here from the Wolf Academy. Today I am joined by my good friend Praz from Native Finance. Um, hi Praz, how are you doing? Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me. No problem at all. No problem at all. And the reason I've got Praz on here today is because of his wonderful platform that he has developed and I've uh, helped doing a little bit of testing on it previously. I absolutely love the platform and I think the people who watch this channel would also love the platform. And there's, uh, you know, the, the one bit I really am interested in, um, the, the heat map side of it, which I think so many people could benefit from. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the platform and um, what, what it is uh, and how it works? Yeah, sure. So just a bit of background on us. So Native Finance, we're the leading tech platform focused on unregulated property lending. So we only cover the unregulated side. So bridging, development, investment finance, et cetera. Um, and we're a subscription-based platform, uh, primarily used by, used by brokers. Um, and the platform's got different elements to it, uh, which you sort of alluded to. Um, so one bit is called Source, which we've had the longest, which is a lender sourcing tool. That's probably the bit that's most sort of familiar to, to the, you know, people listening to this and people in the industry generally, because there are a lot of such tools on the regulated side, as you, as you all know. Um, but as Mark was saying, there's also other elements to the platform. So we have a tool called Track, which is more around market intelligence. So that pulls in real-time data from the land registry and company's house uh, to basically map historic uh, debt transactions in, in real estate. Um, and then we also recently launched some tools called Essentials, which is more around deal management, pipeline management, task management, that sort of stuff. Um, and so the kind of you know, longer term vision is to really build a platform that brokers and um, you know, potentially in the future lenders as well that it could use um, uh, to manage their deal flow, to find the right lenders for their deals, you know, to, to do a lot of market research as well uh, and really just have a one stop shop uh, in terms of the platform. Okay, so um, I know you said it's predominantly for, for brokers and uh, as brokers, we've used the system and, and we really like it. But I presume anybody could use it, a, a more sophisticated uh, property developer, they'll be able to use it to, to, to benefit from. Um, and for me, the, the, the two bits that I really like are the, the heat map that we'll go a little bit more in depth with in a minute, but the, the sourcing system. So... As you said, in the regulated space, there's um, things like Mortgage Brain, Trigold, um, that are almost like a, a money supermarket type of um, platform where you, could, you can choose um, from a, a list of results. But, but your um, system goes a little bit further where you can upload documentation and you can, you can do various things and interact with the, the lenders. Exactly, yeah. And that's, um, that's kind of what sets us apart a little bit. Um, I guess from the, the tools on the regulator side is you can actually get the heads of term saves through the platform. Um, and obviously in the unregulated side, um, it's less kind of clear cut um, in terms of, you know, whether a lender will you know, definitely lend on X or whatever. And so we've actually got things like filters. So you can actually filter out products and, and, and kind of actually drill down into specific matches. Uh, and our rankings actually sort of you know, how likely is the lender to do the deal? And so longer term, you know, hopefully we'll also have, you know, the functionality to be able to message through the platform and stuff like that in the future as well. Um, and yeah, for now, really focus on brokers, but we've already got a few lenders using the um, track tool um, for, um, you know, various things, mostly competitive analysis. Uh, and then, as you said, we've got some larger borrowers as well using the platform, so larger fund managers um, who, who manage, you know, quite a bit of AUM. Um, and we don't really go to the SME borrower though. Um, we just don't think it really makes sense for them uh, just because they you know, often don't know about financing or just don't want to manage it. Uh, and also the financing uh, kind of needs they have tend to be a bit sporadic. You know, They tend to need something every six months, two years, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, we don't go to SME developers, but the thinking is everyone else in, in, in the ecosystem could use the platform uh, in, in one, one way or another. And I think uh, as brokers ourselves, we, we've used the, the, the platform and we can see extra ideas that come um, on the platform. So we, how we look at a loan at the moment is a customer will give us a, um, a, a specification of what they're trying to do. And then we would use our contacts to find out the, the, the best loan solution. But with your system, that not only does it speed it up and maybe for the less experienced brokers, it gives um, a whole list of ideas. But for me, it, it gave 
a couple of extra ideas, which was was great. And there's some lenders I'm using now that I have found on the platform um, and they've given extra options to the customers, which is, which is great. And I, I really like the recommendation um, side of it as well because it, it, it is accurate. It does show who likes this type of deal and who doesn't. And it comes up with things that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So, so that was really good. I really like that. No, that's and that's, that's exactly it. You know, it really depends on the broker. You know, ultimately we're trying to give data and tools. Uh, and as you exactly said, if you're a fairly inexperienced broker, you know, you could you know make the difference between doing the deal or not doing the deal. But for more experienced brokers, um, sometimes it throws up a few new ideas. Sometimes it reminds you of people you already know but sort of forgotten. Um, and ultimately, you know, because we don't actually get involved in the deal, we we just provide the data and the tech. Um, we can have a level of coverage in terms of the lenders out there that might not be possible for a broker who obviously they're actually you know, hunting down leads and trying to convert the deals, et cetera. Um, but um, yeah, shall I, I mean, maybe I'll just share my screen and just yeah, do please. a run through because it's always easier to sort of, you know, show and, and sort of see. Um, perfect. Yeah. So I'll do a quick sort of three minutes or run through really. So yeah, just, you know, as you can see on, on screen here, um, you know, this is a quick sort of summary of the platform. Uh, as I mentioned you know, earlier, we've got those different tools. So we've got source, we've got track and essentials. So the lender sourcing tool, the market intelligence tool, um, and also uh, the essential stuff we're building on. Um, and yeah, coming back to the earlier point, you know, one of the big things we can offer is enhanced coverage. So on the source tool, we've got almost 500 lenders now. And again, because we don't get involved in the deals, you know, we're always onboarding new lenders. We're updating the data we've got on lenders. Uh, and so the data we've got that I think is the best out there. It doesn't mean it's perfect. We're always improving it, but that's what powers the source tool. Uh, and on the track tool, we have that real-time feed with the land registry. And so uh, we actually track over one and a half million historic loans using land registry data and company's house data. Uh, and that also tells us which lenders are active in the market as well. Um, and yeah, we've had over a billion in terms of, of through the platform now and something like 120 million completions. So we've got reasonable traction as well uh, through the platform. Um, but just to show you kind of high level how it all works. So I'm on the platform now. Um, and yeah, just show you the different pieces of the platform. Um, as I was saying, we recently launched Essentials, which we see is becoming more and more an integral part of the platform. Uh, and so, you know, from, from a broker standpoint, um, when you load it up, you actually have a pipeline like you would with a pipe drive or Salesforce or whatever. Uh, and in the same way, you can you know, edit your pipelines, et cetera. Uh, but the crucial thing is uh, when you add a deal in our platform, uh, you can actually add a deal that goes straight into our source tool. So you can either add a deal into the pipeline or a deal that can go straight into the source tool, uh, which you know, through a series of steps can take you to the heads of term stage. Um, now, I won't go through you know, those steps just because you know, we don't want to kind of take up too much time, but just show you an example of a historic deal just so you can see how it works. This is a bridging deal from, from a while back that's been sort of, um, you know, the confidential side has been removed. Um, and so when you add a deal, um, you basically are able to add all the high low parameters, you're able to add files, an overview of the site, et cetera. Um, and exactly as you're saying, Mark, using all that information, um, the platform then actually thinks about which lenders are a fit. Uh, and so, um, you know, for this bridging deal, for example, um, it's come up with these lenders. Uh, and so you can actually see the sort of long list of lender matches. Um, as I was saying, the ranking is really determined by how likely is the lender to do the deal and how cheap the lender is. So a green in theory would be a good match. And then as you go all the way down, you actually get some of your sort of more orange matches, which are uh, less good. Um, and then, yeah, you can actually send the deal to people through the platform as well. Um, so, um, you know, uh, you, when you click send, you can actually decide who it should go to at the lender, or if you don't specify, we match the right people at the lender. But again, we don't get involved in the in the transaction. So you can actually see who it's been matched to. They get your contact information, and you're able to contact them as well. Um, yeah. So that's can I just ask one quick question? Just something that's popped into my head. Um, with the uh, files that you're uploading, can you create a customer file um, and almost like a cloud? Because we, we store all our customer data in clouds. Is that what this can do as well? Or is that something for the future? Uh, yeah, so the platform's cloud-based. And so, yeah, any files, et cetera, you add um, are, um, yeah, are onto cloud. And you can, you can actually download you know, the, 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 the deals of PDF and things like that as well. Um, so, yeah, you can... That's kind of, yeah, as you say, more towards where we're going to in the future. Um, you know, already now you can actually add tasks and things as well to the deal. So just as an example task, right? But you can actually add tasks, et cetera. Uh, and so um, that's something we're working on uh, and hopefully we'll have in the future. 
uh, where you can actually track your customer. Again, this is the thinking with the essential stuff, which is we're getting more into sort of CRM territory, but yeah. um, specifically around property finance. Um, but um, yeah, and, and this, uh, this, this, this looks great, you know, looking at it here. When, when I was working in, um, in the banks, if a, a, cust- a, a broker or even of a customer could come to you with this level of detail and show, like you said, you could store that in a PDF, that, that would be great to show uh, any lender and it just gives, a, and also a customer to show the research that you've done into it. Um, and I'm sure the FCA would be happy about that as well. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just to t- exactly that. And, and I think that's the other thing is hopefully we're aligned with, you know, there's going to be increasing regulatory pressure, right, in, in, in terms of sort of stuff, uh, in terms of showing that you've done, um, you know, sort of uh, given best care to the customer and things like that. Um, but yeah, those are things we're looking to incorporate as well. And hopefully um, in the future, you know, it'll become more and more easy to use a platform like this and a lot, lot easier to use a platform like this um, than to just send emails with attachments and things like that as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, let me, I'll show you the other side really quickly, which yes. is the, the track tool, which is, you were talking about earlier, Mark, the heat maps, et cetera. Um, so the track tool is the other side of the platform, which is uh, the market intelligence side. So we've got that real time feed for the land registry and company's house. Uh, and so this is the first ever map of real estate lending in the UK. Um, and so how it works is it basically maps any loans to companies secured on real estate. Uh, so this is for the last three months. These are the number of new loans in all these regions. Um, as you can see, overall, it's skewing towards or skewed, sorry, towards the buy to let lenders, so TMW, et cetera, by number of loans. Um, what you can do already is you can actually, um, and this is the sort of um, data enrichment we're working on, is you can already filter lenders by lender type. So, for example, if I want to look at overseas banks, I can actually then kind of switch that filter on. Um, we're, still, we're starting to pull in asset value data and purchase price um, data from the land ratio as well. So, for example, if I was looking at a larger loan, uh, I can actually put in an asset value uh, and that will then give me um, some, you know, kind of ideas in terms of who's actually doing those large, large loans, et cetera. Um, and so um, the map is one element of it. Um, the other is uh, actually uh, the company search element. So uh, in the same way you can look up, uh, uh, you know, a location. So I could actually look at a specific location, like, I don't know, Mayfair, for example, I, I can really drill, drill down and you, you know, who the most active lenders are. So this is specifically overseas banks, but if I take that off, I can see you know, Mayfair specifically in the last uh, 12 months. I can actually see you know, the lending activity, you know, who the most active lenders are. I can see what the loans are. So each of these ones is a loan. Uh, when you click on it, you can see um, you know, who, um, who the borrower is, who the lender is, when the deal completed, uh, and what the security postcode address is. Uh, and so that's all sort of quite useful location information. Um, but where the, the, this kind of side of the platform becomes really useful is uh, when you look at specific companies. So you can basically search any company on company's house, um, and that can be a lender or a borrower. Um, so we take um, Handles Bank, for example. Um, what you can do is you can actually map their corporate structure. Um, this is sometimes quite useful just to understand um, you know, how, how they're set up and whether you, know, you can actually focus on a specific entity, for example. Um, but with a lender, what you can do is um, you can actually go in and um, see you know, what their lending activity looks like. Um, so this dark green here, this is for Handles Bank, and this is the number of new loans they're doing per month. This light green is the number of expired loans per month. Um, so you always see this with the banks, they always, they're always growing their loan book in a nice straight line usually. Um, and so you can see you know, that they're, they're kind of lending uh, and, and pretty active. Um, but you can also see how that's changing over, over locations as well. So in the last three months, um, it looks like this. In terms of all loans, it looks like this. Not really a surprise, as we all know, Handels Bank is very decentralized. And so it makes sense that um, you know, it's kind of very uniform and consistent. Um, and then what else you can do is you can also then go in and see um, information on the borrowers themselves. Uh, and this data you can export um, into an Excel file uh, and use that for um, you know, business development purposes and, and, and lead generation, et cetera. Um, and you can also do it the other way as well. So in the same way you can look up a lender's lending, you can also look up a borrower's borrowing. Um, so for example, this is a, one of their borrowers and as you can see, they've got a ton of loans with Handels Banking. So presumably you know, quite an interesting um, potential borrower. Um, but yeah, I'll stop there. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with it, but I guess, yeah, high level, it's, you know, as I was saying, we're trying to give brokers uh, and, and hopefully lenders in the future as well, the data and the tools um, to try and, you know, make your everyday operations more efficient, uh, help you optimize what you're already doing, um, but not, you know, not add another layer or not try to sort of, um, you know, take, take away in terms of what, what you're already doing in, 
in terms of getting deals, in terms of completing them, etc. Um, but yeah, that's the quick summary, really. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. And it, it, it sort of gets a broker's brain, puts it in a platform, and then adds some more stuff to it. That's how as I see it. And it, it really does help. And, I, you know, I've used the tool before, and it is it is useful. Um, and I think there is definitely a place for it. Um, the w- w- Where would you say you're going next? What, what, any, any ideas on the next add-on to it? Yeah, so... Um... I think the point you made was a good one. It's the analogy I always use is, you know, um, it's like flying a plane. You know, we're hopefully building the map, but you ultimately fly the plane. And so, yeah. uh, you know, building a map in this industry isn't easy, um, but that's kind of what we're focused on. Um, in terms of the next steps, the next step is really working more closely with the lenders. Um, so we're actually raising some more capital this summer. Um, and that round really will be about um, focusing more on the lenders because this links to your earlier point, which is, you know, the vision we've got is ultimately we get to a stage where you can actually um, send files, you know, messages, you know, you can actually do all the completion process through the platform. Um, And for that to happen, we need to work with the lenders so that they, you know, to build a version of the platform that they're comfortable with um, and and actually they can use for their underwriting, et cetera. And we see that as sort of the key, um, you know, to you know, get to, to a stage where the industry is adopting these tools as a whole. Um, because unless it's really pushed by the lenders, uh, I think there just isn't going to be that urgency or that sort of need to adopt these tools. Um, now, of course, you know, a lot of the banks have their portals, et cetera, um, but they tend to be clunky and, and not necessarily user-friendly. You know, what we'll hopefully build is something very user-friendly um, and you know, potentially might be something that smaller lenders adopt um, who don't have that sort of infrastructure. Um, but again, if more and more lenders um, adopt tools like this, that's when, you know, hopefully the industry as a whole will, will move towards these sort of solutions. Yeah, I, th- I think so. And if there was a universal platform that all lenders were using, that would be ideal for a broker because we have so many different um, platforms we've got to use. And, you know, they change from time to time. Some have bugs in and it's learning the little nuances behind those platforms to make things go through. And if, if there was one universal platform where you could just go on it, upload your information and send it to a lender and then manage the process, it would make the whole process so much quicker for everybody. So I wish you very good luck with that because it would make my life a lot easier. Yeah, no, definitely. And it is, it's definitely going to be, not going to be easy, right, to establish something like that, no. which is why... Um, we think, you know, if you can get the lenders on board, you know, I think something we are aspiring to do and, and have done is build something that's user friendly, that's, um, you know, kind of really taking on customer feedback. And so hopefully, you know, once we close this next round, you know, we might work with a handful of lenders very closely to try and um, build something that they're comfortable with. And then, yeah, we need to think about how to deploy it and how, how they can actually get customers using it but that's hopefully the end goal and i think so, it will happen at some point right it's just a question of when and whom um, and hopefully we're the people who will do it but how long it'll take that really depends on, on how quickly the industry adopts these tools yes well i wish you well with that um just before we finish this um maybe any idea about the market and uh, where you think property uh, is going to go just because a lot of people who tune in here are property investors and developers. Any, any thoughts on that in the economy? Yeah, I mean, interesting. I, mean, I think um, I mean, we're definitely in, in a macro sense, we're in a bear market kind of environment now, right? Um, just because of everything that's happening. Um, I mean, if you've been following the markets and you know, the stock markets, um, I think we're in solid bear territory in terms of um, inflation is, I think, going to keep kind of surprising the upside. Um, rates are still very low. Um, and let's see what happens, but I, I don't think it's going to be transitory anymore. That's, that's not the sense we're getting, particularly because of you know, Ukraine and Russia being big food exporters, you know, food inflation is going to be a huge issue uh, and also fuel inflation as well for similar reasons. And so, um, you know, let's talk about double digit inflation prints in the UK soon, you know, because there's another energy cap that's going to kind of, um, you know, uh, come off and I think the end of June. And so, I think that sort of macro environment is not um, kind of uh, rosy, but in terms of property, I think uh, to be honest, I think the people on the call will be no, you know, more sort of knowledgeable about it than me. I mean, we have noticed there has been a big sort of slowdown in 
uh, deal flow or, or sort of noticeable slowdown in deal flow this year. Um, also interesting to note that those charts I was showing you about lender activity, you know, when I was doing demos a year ago, all the charts were pointing up in terms of lending kind of activity. Actually, a lot of lenders now are a bit more flat and slowing down and some declining as well. So it's, it's the sense we get, you know, and the data we have seems to indicate less volumes of deal flow in the market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the good thing about, you know, property in the UK is it's fairly resilient, right? And uh, in some senses, potentially kind of an inflation hedge as well. So I think the, the broad outlook for the property industry is probably not bad, but deal flow, I think, is yeah. dry. And I, I totally agree with that. I um, When you usually talk to a broker and you say, how's business? Everybody says it's fantastic. We're doing so much more than ever, really busy. And it, it's all lies. Um, what... I spoke to a broker yesterday, another broker from a different firm, and he said, you know what, it's actually slowed down. And it's the first time I'd really heard a broker admit that it's slowed down. And we have, you know, we've seen it slow down a bit. It's um, probably the last month, especially. Um, we're, we're getting deal flow in, but it's not from the normal people we get deal flow. There are, there are a lot of new people coming in who are almost – chance in their arm thinking let's do let's do an investment but then it never goes anywhere because you know they haven't got the experience or they they, they they pull out for one reason or another but the serial investors i haven't seen as much from so mm-hmm. hopefully with less, less competition there'll be some more bargains out there yeah and i think also there's probably an element of people sitting on the fence i mean uh, not many of us have lived through double digit inflation right the, last no. time, the early 80s late 70s so um, unless you're from, um, you know, sort of that generation, um, you know, I've never experienced this before. And so, I presume there's a lot of people out there who are sort of waiting to see what happens. Uh, and I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a great learning experience for all of us, right? In terms yeah, of definitely. How to deal with this whole environment. But yeah, hopefully, as you say, it's just um, it's a short term thing, and maybe towards, you know, in a in an upside scenario, hopefully Ukraine Russia gets resolved, and then towards the end of the year, things sort of normalise a little bit. Um, but let's see. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting ride. Let's see, indeed, and fingers crossed it all does. So, thank you very much uh, for appearing. We really appreciate it, and um, we um, will follow the progress of Native, and uh, hopefully, we'll do another interview in the future. Um, but thank you, and um, we will hopefully see you soon. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Brad. See you soon. Bye. Thank you.